So Heidi Alexander has stepped down as Labour MP for Lewisham East. And you know what that means? There's going to be a by-election. And God knows what kind of mental case the Labour Party is going to put up in her place. So Heidi Alexander has taken a job in City Hall, so there's going to be a by-election in Lewisham East, and the date's been set, it's June 14th, which is a lot sooner than I thought. That's, what, 33 days away from today? Crazy. I thought they would have done it after summer recess. Usually it's within about a three-month period. So, you know, it's not just me that's shocked by how quick this turnaround is. Local Labour Party members are calling for, the, uh, for a selection process, a better selection process, a local selection process for the Labour candidate, and they're saying that the way they've done it is a stitch-up. Uh, they're actually saying the that's the reason why uh, the writ was moved and the date is so soon, is so that the National Labour Party can just shoehorn in a candidate. Now, I saw an article here on the Labour list. Uh, and in the article it says, quote, The party says it's a parliamentary custom that by-elections are held as quickly as possible, particularly in the case of resignations rather than deaths whereby funeral arrangements may get in the way of a high-speed process. If the NEC didn't draw up the shortlist of parliamentary candidates, the whole operation would likely take up to two months. Before the timetable was approved by the NEC on Thursday, Lewisham East CLP, that's the constituency Labour Party, Chair Ian McKenzie wrote to local members encouraging them to make their opposition to it known to NEC members Anne Black and Andy Kerr. McKenzie said there was no need to rush and called for the shortlist to be decided locally, but CLPs do not determine their own shortlists for by-elections. This is the kind of like bickering and inner chaos that you'd expect traditionally from smaller parties in the far right. Um, I mean, this is amazing. For anyone who thinks that the right's got a problem with bickering, just look at the Labour Party. It happens everywhere. But they've got an actual real concern here, I think. I wouldn't be happy if I was in the Labour Party and uh, the by-election was called just a month from now and the, the head of the party just chooses a candidate when they might have better local candidates. Especially when the Labour Party's got a history of shoehorning in ethnic minorities and people who aren't of privilege and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so Ian McKenzie is writing to members, telling them uh, to tell the Labour Party national body that they want to say in who the candidate's going to be. But who are the runners and riders in this election? We can't say for sure. We don't honestly know who it's going to be at this point, but there is speculation. There are some candidates for this by-election who could well become the next MP for Lewisham. Um, and the reason I say the next MP is because the majority here is massive. It's been a Labour safe seat for I think about 26 years, since 1992. So yeah, 26 years. And the majority in 2017 was 21,123 votes. Yikes. I mean, that's a bigger majority than in 2015 when they had 14,000 as a majority. In 2010, the majority was only 6,216. I mean, so this majority has grown and grown and grown, and that's changed with the demographics of London, obviously. So I've got a list here of five candidates who could replace Heidi Alexander. Number one, Sakina Sheikh. Now, she's the ultimate Corbyn Easter candidate in this one. And last week, she was filmed with a Lewisham imam uh, called Shaquille Begg, who I think I've talked about on the show before and he was found by the High Court in 2016 to have quote clearly promoted and encouraged violence in support of Islam and espoused a series of extremist Islamic positions. This woman shared a platform with an extremist Muslim from a mosque known to have promoted extremism. Uh, Sheikh was also endorsed by Begg uh, from the Lewisham Islamic Centre, which has been linked to the Lee Rigby killers during the local elections recently. And by the way, if you look at what's being said on Guido Fawkes, where I first saw this, and compare it to what's being said on Labour websites, on the Labour website it doesn't say anything about the fact that Sheikh appeared alongside an extremist imam. No, 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 no. The, the RedRaw.com just talks about how Sheikh her once campaign against the privatisation of the NHS. Funny that one. So there's a radical standing for the Labour Party. Who would have thunk it? Then there's Tom Copley. Uh, less interesting, I'm afraid. He's a London Assembly member who lives in Lewisham, so a kind of standard candidate you'd think would probably be used. Uh, but Guido reports that he's been telling his friends that it's likely just going to be an all-women shortlist. Ah, uh, equality. 
um, you know, from a Labour point of view, Copley's an ideal candidate. Um, he, from what I know, he doesn't have any extremist links. Uh, he's local. I might not agree with his policies, but he seems like an obvious choice or one of the possible obvious choices. Then there's John Landsman. Now, he's the leader of Momentum. And it's funny because Momentum, wherever Momentum went in the, gem, uh, in the local elections the other week, Labour failed, which is great. Uh, but I saw John Landsman the other day on TV, and he looks like an upsetting Father Christmas. You know, he looks like if you sat your child on his knee, your child would cry. Um, so he's the head of Momentum. And there's been talk that he's going to make a foray into politics. So, I don't know, some people are saying he could be it. I'm not sure. We'll see. Nadine Horton, uh, she's the GMB union organiser, allegedly a former member of the Socialist Party and militant, uh, so another Labour extremist possible candidate. But there's also rumours of a woman whose name I am going to pronounce wrong. <laughs> Sorry, this is probably going to get accused of some kind of colonial racism here, but it's Phil or File Opoku Gimag. Definitely pronounced that wrong. Uh, senior party sources told the Huff Post in the UK that the party is planning its first ever all woman, all black, and ethnic minority shortlist. This woman, Phil, <laughs> she's the founder of UK Black Pride, and she once returned or rejected an MBE because of the empire's history of racism or what is it, uh, the record on sex, uh, race and sexuality. Turned down an MBE. Amazing. So there we have it. They're the five candidates that we're looking at so far. But I believe it's said online uh, by inside sources that this is all going to be chosen by Wednesday. So it could well be a manic weekend of the Labour Party trying to figure out who the hell is going to be their next MP. And if, if Labour goes through with this in the all-women shortlist, in the all-black and ethnic minority shortlist, um, and if they do this at a national level, level and ignore their local constituency party, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. But what's even scarier is, I mean, this is almost, well, it is just a shoehorning for the Labour Party. They, they get to choose who the next Member of Parliament is that goes into that historic building and pretends to represent the people. So I'm quite worried about that. Uh, I'm quite worried that as much as I may dislike Heidi Alexander, there's probably people far more extreme than her, and one of them could well be about to be elected into British Parliament. <laughs> If you want to see more from me and the rest of the Rebel team, remember to download our app on the Apple App Store and the Google Play Store and like and subscribe.